Hi, everybody. Craig from UR Comp here. And we've got another exciting influencer. It's one of the hottest up and coming slot channels. We've got John from NJ Slots. John, thanks so much for being here. Craig, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Well, actually, so I said NJ Slots, but what is the actual name of the channel and what, what platforms can people find you on? It's it's NJ Slot Guy, and I'm on I'm on every single plat. Well, I shouldn't say that because there's like 27 of them now. YouTube, Facebook, those main ones that I first got into: the YouTube, the Facebook, the the TikTok, the Instagram. I'm still learning about all these these new apps yet, and I and it, I have to get on them. You know, believe it or not. So I'm still working, man. And so, how did you get into it? What tell me about your journey to becoming an influencer? And I wish there was like, like some great story, but it's more of a just ha like just what was like, screw this, I'm making a YouTube channel, because I was watching people do this by accident. One day, I was sitting here with my father. And I put on the Apple TV on YouTube, I would go down with my parents once a month to Atlantic City, play the slot machines here and there. But I was mostly a tables guy. And I just happened to say to my father, what's a machine that they don't have anymore? I said, I bet you somebody put a picture or video of it. You know, that was my thought process. All of a sudden, man, I'm five, six hours deep into, you know, Brian Christopher, Diana Ebony, East Coast slots, the big payback, you know, and yeah. it took me once I did that, I, I want to say it took me two months for me to finally just be like, you know, screw this. I'm doing this with no thought process of what was going to happen. I had the idea of I'm going to have 134 subscribers that are all my friends. Nothing is going to happen from this. And I mean, months later, a couple months later, I had 10,000 subscribers before I could realize what the hell was going on. Craig. That's crazy. So when you started, were you like, were you thinking through what's going to make your channel different? Because obviously you, you've got a big personality. You got the New Jersey accent. I mean, was, were you thinking that's going to be my angle or were you just like, I'm just going to record myself playing or like, tell, what was your thought process when you first started? <laughs> So my the when I first started the thought process was all right church kid don't open your mouth just record the slot machine keep your mouth shut you have no idea what you're doing I didn't know that you know we lived in a world where I can say and do whatever I want you know and once I must have slipped one day and the audience lost their mind in a good way obviously most of the demographic being from the east coast they wanted more harsh you know things at that point, when it started to grow, I had to sit down and say to myself, all right, let's do this now. It's not hard to be yourself, you know, just take it easy. You know, the world's not ready for you yet. And the biggest thing I asked myself was, what can separate you from everything that you're watching? And the number one thing was, and I still do it to this day, is I share every single session. And most of my sessions are losing. 1,200 videos, Craig, a thousand of them are losing sessions. And it has hurt my channel over six years because people don't want to watch 20 minutes of losing. But once I saw the appreciation of it from the audience and how relatable it was, because it is the reality of it, you know, more than 90% of the time, I was just like, let's do this. So, you know, this, this doesn't, this isn't costing me. If anything, it's helping me. I didn't realize, you know, in the world, people want to see, I want to see 25,000 jackpots. They want to see me lose two grand. You know, how can I, how can I make that fun? I start cursing at the machine, you know, I'm threatening it. I'm talking <laughs> to, to the weird animations and stuff and realized I became the entertainer, not the, not the slot machine. This slot machine has to win when it wins. I'll let it take front row, Craig. You know what I mean? But otherwise this is on me to be as entertaining as possible and be relatable to my audience. Sorry. That was the longest answer of all time. No, that's a great answer. I mean, I, I and yeah, the more uh, details, I think the more interesting these are. So the, um, so when you started, you started making that switch, was there, was it kind of steady growth? And then was there a, like one video that popped and you're like, all right, now we're, now we're really onto something like, yeah. What, tell me about like kind of the growth of the channel. Good question. When, when I, when I came into the space, it was normal for a 50,000 view video and my, my highest performing ones at, at that time would throw out six figures. That was normal to me. You know, I didn't realize that this was a viral, you know, because I was, I'm clicking on Brian's videos and he has way above that. I didn't realize that this was considered viral. Now I do, you know, when, when my videos are averaging four five, 6,000 views, I'm going, oh my God, you know? So I have a couple like million viewed videos out there, but it was more, it wasn't the, it wasn't what was happening. It wasn't one winning video that took it and like exploded, which is which is, I kind of like it because that did it. That isn't what made me what I was. It was me, you know, it was all my losing videos that 
that just took me, you know, into the stratosphere at one point. I was at 50,000 subs before I could blink, you know, and I didn't do anything special. Yes, I had some jackpots and stuff and I was doing degenerate high limit gambling, but it was mostly losses, Craig, and they're all shared. So it's like in a week you were getting, you know, a net loss of, you know, thousands. So it's like, it was just, it, I'm luckily, I'm lucky that it was me that was, you know, uh, making myself viral. It wasn't a specific video. So I wish I could answer that better. And I didn't know what I was doing with videos either. The 10 minute mark and all that stuff. A high limit session is three and a half minutes in reality. So yeah. I would take like one and two and make it like a seven and a half minute video. So my biggest win at the time was like a, you know, it was a crap video. You know, there was just, it was me. It was me. The people loved me. That's awesome. Now, do you remember the first time you were recognized in real life by a, a fan of the channel? That is, that is an awesome question. And I think you are the first person to ever ask me that, which is pretty funny. Um, I do apologize if I have answered this before to anybody, but I don't remember. But I'm also, you know, half, you know, whatever up there. <laughs> so this is funny. I wish I remembered their name. I was at the Golden Nugget in Atlantic City with my father. And we had, we were, we were, le I think we were leaving. I think we were leaving. And the elevator stopped to get out of the parking garage. And there was a couple in there. I walked in and the lady was like this. <gasps> Oh my God, you're in. And I'm like this, like we're on an elevator. I'm claustrophobic. I don't like people as it is. Like, this is not the right reaction for me to see at first. Right. Like I'm now I'm now I'm nervous, you know, but then she was like, Oh my God, you're in Jay Slock. I, and the husband recognized me too. And they both started going nuts and they couldn't, you know, believe it. And it, it, it was, I, it was crazy. It was good that I was with my father too, because my father was taken aback from it. He couldn't believe it either. And this is what makes this story so great. I never saw them again until I threw this Slotticon together with, uh, with Mr. Hanfei in January and they came to that. And when I tell you, just got chills when I, when I said that, because it shows how far the loyalty of the audience goes. I wish I remembered their names. They've said it to me a hundred times. When they came up to me, they did not think I was going to recognize them, Craig. I, I grabbed them. And I was like, oh, my God. I said, you are the first two people to ever wreck. And they couldn't believe that I remembered them. And at, at that moment, I FaceTimed my father. He didn't pick up. Thanks a lot, Dad. <laughs> because he remembers them, too. We still talk about it. You know, my father will say it to, like, you know, random person. But I, I, will, ne I will never forget how they look like. I will never forget their faces. I'll obviously forget their names clearly. Um, but that is... You know, that was just like a perfect, you know, story for it to be them it is the fact that I six years, I never saw them again. I always thought about them. And sure enough, they show up to one of the biggest events I ever put together. It was very touching. You know, it was very hard to not get emotional at that time, too. That is such a cool story. Now, for folks that aren't familiar with your channel, I'm so getting familiar with your personality and that's enough to tune in. But tell us about like where where do you normally play? And then like what what's kind of your betting style when you're when you're playing? What games do you like? So, Craig, it's come to the point where it's it's not even about what I like because there's so many new varieties and new variations of things that have been out there for a year or two and I don't even know about them, you know, and then I end up sitting down and I go, this is, this is pretty cool. However, I built my audience on old school machines because I was going to Atlantic City, man. This is this is old school haven down here. And I was going to the Golden Nugget, which is like they you got to flash a pass that you're like, you know, 65 and over to get into the Golden Nugget <laughs> because that's usually the crowd. And they, it, it was the high limit room. It's always a high limit guy. And 85% and of the machines at that time were all old school, these fixed jackpots. You know, now it's like, you know, you, you have all these variations, like I said, of things and lightning link came out, forget about it. The world exploded. So I don't have anything that I'm like, I have to play this because this is one of my favorite blah, blah. You know, it's not even like that anymore. Six, six years of losses into this on every machine. There's maybe three machines that I got you know, that I'm a plus on forever. And I don't even want to go near them anymore, Craig. You know what I mean? I want to keep that. I want to keep that average, you know, in the, in the plus. And now I forgot about the other half of the question. Can you please? Yeah. Ask so, it? so you, you focus mainly on high limit old school type games. Now you're branching out to more like any kind of high limit game. It sounds like. Yes. And you know, I, I, I'm saying to myself, I only have one audience too. And I'm like, Oh my God, let me get out to the rest of these people that have no clue. I even exist, you know, and not only can I bring them these new variations of the game, but I throw myself into the mix for them. You know, I make fun of the, like I said, I make fun of the characters. I talk to them, I give them names, you know, and, and, and I'm fighting tooth and nail to try to get one of these slot manufacturers to like, 
to, to hear me say one of these names and go, hey, you know, can you do this machine for us and use the name for, you know, like, um, like Donnie the Devil from Wicked Wheel? Like, that's just, you know, it's something we do around here, but he's got a nickname. So it's like, yeah. it just comes naturally, you know, so I started doing that. <laughs> you know, let's, let's just, let's make it a better, you know, let's make it a more, let's bring more comedy to the scene because this is a joke. You know, at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, the name of your channel, NJ Slots Guy, are you focused mainly on Atlantic City or now you playing at other areas? It it was, Craig. Like I said, you know, I, I I was in that mix. I was just getting used to recording. You know, you still have these casinos all across the nation that, like, don't want us there. They're not welcoming at all. And I wish I could say to you, I have, like, you know, I have one spot that I always go to. I don't. I want to travel as much as possible across this nation, meet the creators. I want to see your local excuse me, your, your local casino. I want to see what it's about. And I'm going to bring myself, you know, into that mix. I do have some favorites and I do have the ones that I, that I frequent here and there, but that's just because of convenience, not because, Oh, I like, yeah, I love Foxwoods over this one. That's why. No, it's because I can drive there. You know, Tampa's a two hour flight. Hollywood's a two and a half hour flight. These are easy to get to. Trust me. I wish I can go out to, you know, Jack's in Cleveland more or, Oh, Man, you want to talk about because you said you're from Texas. Oh man, I love Oklahoma. You have no idea. It, those red screens are a degenerate dream. <laughs> and and I love it down there, man. I'm a big football guy. The Texas. Every time I drive over the, the Red River, I'm going nuts. I'm cheering. I'm going. This is one of the best games in college football. All the history there. The food is incredible, and it's gigantic. Wind started. You got Choctaw down the road. So it's like, if it was more convenient to get to, I would go to those more too. So I don't really have like a like a home base, obviously New Jersey is home base, but that's because of the convenience, not because I like it. Atlantic City's garbage nowadays. It really is. Not to bash it. Hey, come move out to North Texas. You can go to Oklahoma all the time, drive out to Louisiana. What I mean? And I get yeah. to see you, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, if you come out to the Red River shootout, that OU Texas game, that's always in Dallas. So if you want to come, you got a place to stay. Correct. <laughs> don't 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 do things like this all right because college football is very serious this is a football place you know you start talking football i don't know how we didn't touch base on on your top row there did you know i'm a diehard 49ers fan are you really since 1989 man a oh, man yeah we've got 1989 it's a little faded we got joe montana autograph steve young we got a jerry rice cleat over here so we're going for a ride i know this is this is in my son's room not even mine Oh, heck yeah. oh, the catch is killing me. The, the reflection is killing me, though. No, Signed by him. Oh, Signed nice. Him. The late, great Dwight Clark. Man, yeah. man, we should have touched on some Niners stuff a little bit more if I knew this, Greg. Here's my Jerry Rice shoe right here. Oh, man, the greatest. That's the guy that's the reason why I became a Niners fan. Watching him just naturally run routes and abs. I wanted to be, I wanted to be a wide receiver so bad. Yeah, no, and I was. You know, until I got a taste of defense and I realized I could take my head and just jam it into somebody's chest and take their soul from them, except the fact that I'm 165 pounds. So usually, usually it went the opposite way and a lot of concussions, as you can see, right? <laughs> so I had to be the shifty guy over the middle, catch the ball and go. Luckily, Jerry Rice taught me, you know, how to do a lot of that. That's amazing. All right. Well, we'll have to check in during the season. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Hopefully the Niners, the Niners, Niners stuff. The Niners yeah. stuff threw me off, I'm man. Get over the hump. Um, that's amazing. All right. So yeah. So I'm I'm obviously a Niners fan in, in enemy territory in Dallas. So yeah, you'll you'll be welcome here. Um uh, all right. We uh so you said you travel around to a lot of different casinos and without naming names, because obviously you want to be in good grace with everybody. What um what are some of like your favorite amenities? Are there anything like that sets different casinos apart where you're like, oh my god, I gotta come back here because they have XYZ or maybe it's a service type thing or what is it that jumps out that you really look forward to when visiting a casino? I like to be, you know, especially because I'm going there as a creator and not as a gambler. I'm not just going there with like a bunch of friends to fool around. I do have an expectation a little bit more. And one of them is that the staff knows exactly what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. because A, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. B, I'm in the middle of filming. Like, how don't you know I'm, I'm here? And I can honestly say that, you know, like, like Foxwoods, 
they leave you alone, man. Tampa, I signed a contract with them years ago with the guys that were in charge at the time. I can fly to Tampa right now with you, Craig. You can meet me there, and I could just pull out my tripod and start filming. The ease of being able to film is is an absolute top priority for me now. I care about resort credits and free dinners and all that stuff. You can find good food anywhere if you really look. You know, I wish that was a thing because there's a lot of beautiful steakhouses in a lot of these places. Um, however, down by you, the space, you know, Windstar, I think Choctaw belongs in Vegas. That's how beautiful of a casino it is. You know, those are those are two of my favorite casinos to visit, you know, and that goes well with the people, too. I love the surroundings of having people around me that know what's going on or people that recognize me. It's a very loving environment. So always the environment and the ambiance. And one thing that that won't, you know, necessarily bring me, but it it is a plus, is a view. I love the view of the mountains, man, purple mountains, majesties. And so I'm used to seeing trees all the time. Craig, I, I can't see this anymore. You know, there's there's just trees everywhere. So to go somewhere and just see a bunch of trees, I don't want to see. I want to see mountains, man. I want to see beautiful landscape. I love down in down in Texas, Oklahoma, just to flat being able to see like 700 miles or whatever. Which, by the way, you do live in Texas. Let me ask you something. I'm driving down the highway. I don't know what the main highway is there, and I could see as far as the horizon goes. How far would you say that is? How far can you see? Yeah, if you had to just estimate. I don't know why I'm asking this. It's probably because it bothers me all the time. Because when I explain it to people, I want it to be that much more realistic. Yeah, I'm trying to think because one, like, because there's not a lot of big buildings. But basically, like, if you're driving up to Choctaw, for example, from Dallas, that's, you know, that they've got a big tower now. And that's one that you could probably see from, gosh, I don't know, 15, 20 miles away. I really don't yeah. know. I'm not good at things like that. But yeah, because it's always like, Texas is so flat. If you're coming up, you start seeing the towers of um, of downtown Dallas, you know, the big buildings. And then if you're driving up through North Car or Oklahoma, super flat, you can see Choctaw. Windstar's tower isn't as big as Choctaw's, right? That one's, they've got a couple nice hotels, but I don't think, I think the new Choctaw Windstar is more tower. wide where yeah. Choctaw is tall. So yeah, yeah. Like, like you said, you could see it from, you know, however far away, which is their goal, obviously, right? Which is every casino's goal to be as tall as the Empire State Building. You know, you go into AC, you're on the expressway, you could see that from 20 miles away. You know, yeah. you're God is sticking out like a sore thumb over there. That's the point, right? Oh, let's, let's get that in. You know? Right. <laughs> right. So how do you see, uh, obviously that casinos are becoming a lot more welcoming influencers, manufacturers are working with influencers. How do you see this trend continuing to evolve over the next couple of years? I definitely, it's, we are, we are evolving way quicker than I thought. Like I had an estimate on the amount of channels there were until like a couple other creators put me in my place and they added a couple zeros to it. And I was like, yes, it is an overly saturated market, but guess what, man? Now we're all over the country where you're going to have creators reaching out to every casino and everybody's going to hear about us where they're going to have to give in. Like, what are you going to do? You're really going to turn us away. This is free advertising. It really is for most of us. It's free advertising. It should get to a point where we do get paid because we're not just gamblers. You know, we are also the gambler that we always were. Now we are a creator for you as well. And depending on the numbers, you know, we could bring you a lot more, you know, than the normal person has to offer. How can you turn us down? Five, 10 years from now, this is going to be the thing, most likely. I still feel like we're, we're on the, you know, the ground floor moving up ever so slightly. And for casinos that maybe haven't embraced influencer marketing yet, uh, what advice would you give them to like, all right, you're going to do it. Here are some, some things you should do. You mentioned earlier, like Foxwoods just lets you, lets you be and lets you record whatever. I mean, what are, what are some other pieces of advice you can give to casinos? I would say, you know, have an open mind about this. You have an older crowd that are in these executive decisions and it's a lot easier for them to say no, right? It's, it's always easier to say no. We don't want anything to do with this. Just open your mind a little bit. You know, we are all out there to the general public. If I reach out to you and I say, hey, I, you know, I want to come into to your casino. I'm looking for $500 in free play a day. Um, here are my deliverables. It, first of all, answer back. Like, give me a no at least. There's a lot of no responses from these places. And it's like, if something doesn't sound right there, let me know. Do you need more out of me? Do you not, do you want me to go about it a certain way? Are there certain hours to avoid? Like we can work with each other, but you got to open your mind, you know, to what's going on here. Like, 
I see casinos stopping people from taking pictures. It's like, we're not, it's not 1999. There's a phone in everybody's hand. This is life now. Like we have officially evolved, evolved with us. We have now, we're, we're showing a generation that is becoming a lot smarter than just going to gamble. Like, you know, the retirees and, and this older generation, like my parents, these, you know, they're getting smarter to say, wait a minute, why would I go play a slot machine? So why don't you let us handle it and show them why they should play a slot machine? Not that I recommend it, but hey, I can show them something that they might not know exists because you don't do it. Foxwoods doesn't put out just to, you know, I'm, I'm just using them as the example, not saying they do this. Foxwoods doesn't post, you know, on their page every time there's a new machine there. I will. I'll go play your machines. And my, my channel is going to see, you know, 30 days from Foxwoods. How can you tell me I'm just a normal, you know, person in that way? Why wouldn't you compensate me? And why wouldn't you welcome me with open arms, you know? So mm -hmm. that advice is it, you got to open your mind and just do a little bit of research. Don't just say no. But that's, you know, that's that, again, that's that older generation because whenever it is accepted, the person I'm shaking hands with is usually the same age as me, maybe, you know, no more than, than a decade older. So it's like, it seems to be that 45 and under gap that are in these exec executive positions that have that open mind. So as a whole, they need to do it. Like you have to, you got to evolve with us, right? Mm -hmm. Well said. And it, yeah, you're right about the power of the influencer, like getting them to try new games when maybe they just not play at all. Because I see you, you mentioned you've got a, a young son. I've got, I've got young boys too. And they like that dude. Perfect. You're familiar with that channel? Is your oh, son? Yeah, of course. As, as, as soon as, as soon as he found out about dude, perfect, it was over with because you know, I'm constantly with him and like my, my son can't, couldn't get over the fact of how well I throw a spiral. I said, I said, this is like, it takes 10,000 hours to master something. I'm like, kid, I was outside every day playing football. unlike you guys, you know, and when he came into to bring to do perfect, everything he does is, is even more perfect. He's, he's taking a spiral and he's, you know, throwing it through this and that forget it. He's locked into that. He, he can't get away from that. You know, and then he's trying to do it himself, you know? Yeah. And the, the, uh, they did a deal with Smoothie King. And my kids, all of a sudden, they want to go to Smoothie King every single day. It was never like, they never cared about smoothies. But then they have a dude perfect cup. And now they're like, we got to have Smoothie King. Exactly, Smoothie King. man. Yeah. So and we're all just take that idea, right? Craig, exactly. take that idea. That's literally, that could be me. That could be the next creator. There's thousands of creators. You don't know who's going to hit it, you know, on the head. But if you just say no, you're never going to have that. You're not going to lose money on us. We are gamblers. Without content, I don't have a channel. So mm -hmm. that I bring even more to, I can't fly down to Texas, hit a major $100,000 jackpot and leave. What my, my channel stuff, I got one video. I have to stay there and create content. And what the hell you think I'm going to do with $100,000? Things are going to get a lot more interesting in those next upcoming videos. Why wouldn't you want that? And that's what most of us are, right? We were just degenerate gamblers, most of us, and we turned it into something. So feed us and we will gladly, you know, feed it right back. Like we'll give it right back. We know that in the end, we're playing slot machines. We're just, you know what I mean? <laughs> come on. So as we uh, come near the end, what, what are you looking forward to for the next 12 months with your channel? Anything on the horizon that you're pumped about? Absolutely, man. I, I just I, I had signed with a company and I just started doing interviews for them. I had this idea in my head. I had tons of creators coming to me and actually saying that, you know, man, you, you need to have your own podcast. You are hilarious. You need to do this. That. The problem is, Craig, I don't have the time and I have too many variables going on where I could just be like, hey, 10 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Do, you have I have three kids. I got two boys and a girl in the middle and they're all young, you know, so it's it's absolute mayhem to try to be able to just, you know, focus on a certain time, certain thing. So I ended up talking to, to this website and I had approached the thing of, I always wanted to talk to the creators because I'm not just somebody on the outside. I know most of them and a lot of them, you know, with some big numbers, don't you want to hear about them and their background? They feel more comfortable talking to me. We could talk about times we had together and I wanted to make it more of a, like a, you know, like a Johnny Carson thing almost, and just, you know, feed off them. Lots of comedy, a lot of BS, you know, and not just, you know, we're running down, you know, a, a list of questions, bah, 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 bah. no, let's go off on a tangent and absolutely go, you know, bananas and let's give it to your audience. I'm not doing this for me. You know, my audience knows how I am. I'm a, I'm an absolute, you know, 
whatever head case, you know, they're going to get what they see behind the camera, but you may not know Craig, you know, let me show you a little bit more of Craig because you only know him from his channel. Let's go outside of that. And let's really, you know, knock some things out of the park here. And that was, you know, that's, that is on my list. I had just started that and I just got into the iGaming space as well. So I got a lot of things going on for the next 12 months. I can't wait to travel again because now outside of the content creation and the slot machines, I want to do in-person interviews. That's my main thing. This is all well and good and it's very easy to do, but Craig, I'd rather be sitting next to you drinking coffee, scotch, bourbon, whatever the hell kind of shit you're going to hand me, you know, and we're going to have some fun and that's my goal. So I can't wait, man. Next 12 months is going to be a fun time. I love it. And are all these videos, this, the new content you're coming out with, is that going to be on the NJ slots guy channel or I will be sharing clips and stuff from that and the teasers. So you can see what's going on next and I'll forward you over, you know, they just started, they have, they didn't they have zero subscribers on YouTube, zero, all this. And that's another thing that gets me going. I'm not going to an estab. They already got a hundred thousand. No, we're, it's starting from the ground floor and I want to be the reason to get them a hundred thousand subscribers, you know, or something. I don't get any revenue share off that or anything. You know, I love helping and, and growing because we all grow together, man, way more than, than we will apart. Absolutely. All right. So everybody go follow NJ Slack guy and all the major channels. And then if there's a casino that's watching this and they want to bring you out, what's the best way to, to get a hold of you? NJ slot guy at gmail.com. Only the best get my personal cell phone number. So, you know, if you get into that realm, I'll fly out to you every day. But uh, <laughs> NJ, NJ slot guy at gmail.com, please contact me. I'm open to go anywhere. I will fly to you. I will walk to you. I will take friggin' huskies in the snow to go do that. There's a good story about driving in the snow on the Garden State Parkway to just go to a group poll event, um, you know, where my life was on the line for that. I'm serious. I will go wherever whenever because i want to show the world where you are that you exist i want to show my people my demographic you know exactly what's out there you know travel get the hell out of here like this is one of the best things i ever did was get out of this state and go around and meet all of these other creators and see all these different casinos that i didn't even know about i didn't know there were red screens craig you are hiding this from me for 30 something years and now I know that I could fly to the middle of the country, bring my whole Jersey crew. Will we make it back? Maybe, maybe not. But <laughs> once once I get a taste of, of the red screens, it's over. Like, like explain it's to everybody, over. explain to everybody what the red screens are. All right. So I now there there there's a there's a bingo card that has to do with this, Craig. And before I get into these red screens, when I film in Oklahoma, I don't show the bingo card. And it does it upsets a lot of people, but I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Doesn't that bring a mystery to it that you don't know you now? Cause they're like, Oh, here's the, the, the show stopper. And they got all these names for these things. Like, you know, something's going to come out. I don't. And I love that. The mystery of it. Right. Yeah. I don't like the whole dramatic boom, boom. I like for something to smack like that wheel of fortune. You think you're out of it. And then all of a sudden, Oh, we're back <laughs> in now it's party time. Right. You see how you now red screens are this. Imagine playing your normal wheel of fortune machine or whatever it is, you know, bars, and you just spin and all of a sudden it starts dinging, ding, 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 all the bells that everybody complains about. The screen turns red and this thing starts turning and it starts spitting out wins. It doesn't just turn, it starts spitting out wins. It could do it once or it could do it for a minute and a half like it did for me on Polar High Roller. Craig, I was sitting there like this. Most of the video was a bonus. I couldn't believe my eyes. I wish I was doing $100 a spin because it would have been a billion dollars. <laughs> and you can't you're already you're taking something that's already a gamble right that that's already fun and all this stuff and you're adding these red screens to it are you nuts a cherry could drop for double my bet so one dollar to two dollar and then all of a sudden this thing could spin for an hour and give me 50 grand what are you nuts don't tell me that <laughs> there's a lot of people that don't know that this exists craig and once once the word gets out it's over i want you to know that you guys better be ready <laughs> well i put in the comments or Send it to me. We'll put it in the uh, description, the video with the red screen where it went nuts. Oh, up. man, what a good video that was, too. I mean, uh, Polar High Roller. I think it was Polar High Roller. I'm pretty sure it was. It was a five-liner. It was like a dime or a quarter. It was doing 173,000 lines or whatever the stupid bet was. And the thing just went bananas. It was great. It was great, Craig. And that was it. That was, that was like, you know, my taste of it. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I want to live here now. That's amazing. Well, John, NJ Slots guy. Thank you so much for your time. This is amazing getting to talk to you and hear more about your channel. And everybody, 
Go subscribe, follow NJ Slots guy. Thanks, Craig. I really appreciate it, man. Anytime. Thank you.